Our faculty are committed to making a difference in the world, and they're looking for ways to take their ideas and make them into products and services. It's a young university that has achieved a lot in a very short period of time. As you'll see, our faculty are doing amazing things in lots of different areas, and it's time we help people understand the impact we're making. I developed a technology based on fiber optics for sensing of structural strains and cracks in bridges, tunnels, and dams. Once everyone found out about its merits, it was employed in many structures, including Brooklyn Bridge, Lingotto Bridge in Italy, and many bridges across the U.S. Now there's a whole new discipline created based on this technology. We have developed a very simple blood test to identify depression. The ability to have a blood test that can guide both diagnosis and treatment is really earth-shattering because now it gives us a chance to identify depression and discern it from bipolar disorder or a number of other maladies that could be mistaken for depression in the primary care setting. We were able to kill cancer stem cells while causing no side effects to the healthy tissues. And we can give as high dose as possible because we are not damaging the other tissues. So there is a very good future for the cancer to be treated by this mechanism. We call these targeted nanomedicines. For years, the research community in sleep apnea syndrome has been focused on anatomical and mechanical problems with the airway in the neck and not thinking about the fact that it's the nervous system that really controls the way we breathe. People with sleep apnea syndrome don't have breathing problems when they're awake. The problems only occur during sleep when the state of the central nervous system shifts. What Professor Kali and I have been trying to do is to find pharmacological approach in the treatment of sleep apnea. When this model of pharmacological treatment of sleep apnea is validated in the huge number of patients, then certainly benefits for the patients would be immense. That means no artificial breathing with the air pumped into the lungs. Simply one takes a pill in the evening before going to sleep, and that's it. We're very hopeful this approach will lead to safe and effective drug treatments for sleep apnea syndrome, ideally within the next five to 10 years. These days, we read about cybercrime everywhere. The damages to companies run to billions of dollars a year. And techniques that I have developed help identify security holes so that businesses can plug these holes even before cyber criminals can take advantage of them. The specific pattern that I have is the first known method that automatically fixes this security hole in a matter of seconds. The environment is changing too quickly for plants to be able to produce as much food as they did even 10 years ago. So we're interested in phenylalanine. Plants make this in order to make their defense systems. We've been able to change its quantities in the plant so the plant can better defend itself against unexpected environmental stress. It's a win-win situation because the plant can now defend itself and at the same time will be able to provide more food for not only local populations but world populations. We have combined 3D virtual reality with robotic technology to give surgeons not only a 3D perspective of what they see, but also the sense of touch so they can actually feel the bones, the tissues, the different material properties. So this is revolutionizing the training process for surgeons. African Americans have the highest prevalence of hypertension in the world. When we focus on the biology of cells that line blood vessels between African Americans and Caucasians, we see there's blood vessel issues that may predispose them to having high blood pressure. So the discoveries that we make in our lab, we use those discoveries to translate to better treatments in this population. The project I'm really excited about is a novel approach to reattach lost teeth, reinfect and regrow a ligament around these teeth with stem cells, then replant these teeth into the sockets. Because the procedure we are using does not use expensive metal implants, eventually this procedure might be a strategy to provide biological and inexpensive dental care for the average population. Our innovative pain reported program, which is a computerized program that allows the patients to use a touchscreen computer like the iPad or the tablet to be able to report all of the information that healthcare professionals need to make good decisions about better managing that pain so that instead of spending all of their professional time collecting the data, 
they can interpret the data and then act on the data to be able to give appropriate therapies. We desperately need for Alzheimer's disease something that we can measure before the disease actually manifests. Six years ago, though, I designed a transgenic mouse that takes into account a human gene that increases risk for Alzheimer's disease 60-fold that has not been taken into account in other AD mouse models. What we've needed is a biomarker that will let us identify who's going to get the disease. And in our mouse, I think we've got it. My work is focused on a group of diseases called autoimmune diseases. Today, the modalities of treatment for most of these diseases is general immunosuppression with unwanted side effects of increased infection and development of cancer. My technology allows us to provide targeted therapy, therefore the rest of the immune system remains intact to give the protection that we need every day while attacking the cells that are causing the disease. So the invention that I'm most proud of is this dual chamber micropump that can deliver more than one drug to a patient, especially type 1 diabetes. We are making the micropump small enough that it will allow the patient to enjoy their lifestyle and do the normal activities without having to stop and, and go and get a syringe and try to measure their sugar level. It's a joy to see them conduct life in a normal fashion just like everybody else. The innovation that I'm most proud of is the development of a program called Fit and Strong for older adults with osteoarthritis. It's a physical activity behavior change program that's demonstrated significant benefits for participants and it's shown that we can reverse disability associated with arthritis. There's one thing that surgeons will never give up and that's using their hands. The problem is that there are aspects such as how much force I'm actually putting on something that my body cannot tell me. So we've adapted a technology uh, it literally is as simple as a surgeon's glove. You slip your hand into this thing and it tells you numerically on a display exactly what your hand is doing. As a physician and an engineer, two incredibly exciting things are happening here. One is the Innovation Center, which allows me to take my ideas and make them so much better by working with other talented people. And the other is OTM, which over the last couple of years uh, has facilitated commercialization by teaching me how to start a company and make it work.